Hi, I'm Kritika, and today we're going to be talking about metformin. Metformin is a well-documented drug which is used commonly in the management of type 2 diabetes for over half a century now. It is in fact recommended as the drug of choice by the American Diabetes Association and the European Association for the Study of Diabetes. Now, normally what happens is our body produces an important hormone named insulin, which keeps a check on our blood glucose levels. High amount of glucose in our blood, for example, after a high carbohydrate diet, stimulates the synthesis and secretion of insulin. This insulin then acts on various cells of our body to promote the uptake of glucose and also prevents the formation of glucose by various metabolic processes, such as gluconeogenesis. Collectively, insulin decreases our blood glucose levels. But in type 2 diabetes patients, there is a state of insulin resistance, that is, their body stops responding to insulin, resulting in really high blood glucose levels. This excessive and untreated blood glucose gets converted into some toxic product known as advanced glycation end product, which is responsible for the pathogenesis of various complications associated with diabetes, such as cardiovascular disease, nerve damage, kidney disease, eye disease, increased susceptibility to infections, etc. Metformin is really a wonder drug in these patients because it helps reduce the increasing blood glucose levels. It does so by decreasing the glucose production from the liver, promoting glucose uptake by cells, and delaying glucose absorption from the gut. It also decreases appetite and has a special weight loss promoting effect. Hence, it is preferred in patients with obesity who also have type 2 diabetes mellitus. For a very long time, it was thought that metformin acted majorly by the activation of adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase or AMPK at the molecular level. As you can see in the flowchart here, activation of AMPK by metformin results in two downstream actions. It inhibits the gene promoting gluconeogenesis and it also increases the expression of a glucose transporter named GLUT4 on fat and muscle cell, thereby increasing the uptake of glucose. However, in the past few decades, the perception that metformin acts only through AMPK dependent mechanism has changed. In fact, a couple of studies showed that the AMPK pathway is maybe neither essential and not even sufficient to be responsible for the reduced hepatic gluconeogenesis. Increasing data has now accumulated, which suggests the existence of some AMPK independent mechanisms as well. For example, two important mitochondrial actions have been described, along with the AMPK, which help in the suppression of hepatic gluconeogenesis. This flowchart shows the conventional AMPK pathway, which is responsible for reduced hepatic gluconeogenesis. But now we have two mitochondrial actions as well, for example, inhibition of the mitochondrial electron complex and the mitochondrial target G3PDH. Recent evidences have also suggested that metformin mediates a lot of its action to the gut as well. So you can see in this figure that, metfor that gut is the major site of glucose utilization and metformin increases the glucose uptake in the gut. It alters the gut microbiota, which results in increased production of butyrate and propionate, both of which are involved in glucose homeostasis. It also promotes the growth of a bacteria, an intestinal bacteria, acromancia, which has been associated with decreased tissue inflammation and has also known to improve the metabolic profile of diabetic patients. It also induces the release of incredents such as GLP-1, and also increases the expression of their receptor. Incretins are important peptides which are involved in glucose homeostasis.
It metformin is also known to retard aging in animal models to see elegance by altering folate and methionine metabolism in their intestinal microbiota. The metformin's exact mechanism of action has been a bone of contention. Rapid developments are occurring in this regard, and many studies have proposed other novel mechanisms as well. It is now widely accepted that metformin brings about its action by acting on various molecular targets and modulating a variety of different pathways and processes. And though we've been using this drug for almost 70 years now, new actions continue to be discovered, broadening the range of conditions where metformin could now be used. Talking about the doses and the toxicity, the maximum recommended daily dose by the FDA is 2000 milligrams. Metformin is a quite safe drug. However, some side effects such as nausea, vomiting, vitamin B12 deficiency is common. Contraindications include renal failure, metabolic acidosis, and hypersensitivity to this drug. Lactic acidosis, which is now known to be a rare complication, was one of the reasons why there were apprehensions in the 1950s and 60s for approving metformin in the treatment of type 2 diabetes. But obviously, we now know that it's a really rare complication. So this was all about metformin for today. And thank you for listening.